On tonight's episode of Real Tree Global Hunting, we see if rugby heroes Craig Newby and Tom Croft can make the grade as they embark on their very first hunting trip to the beautiful Czech Republic. On the outskirts of Prague in the Czech Republic lays one of Team Wild's very favourite hunting destinations, Debris. Owned by Count Leonard Colorado Mansfield and managed by his Jägermeister Milan, this is one of the most beautiful estates we've ever been invited to. In this beautiful forest there's an abundance of game ranging from troublesome wild boar to a selection of deer species. All feed happily on the vast food sources provided by the forest. However, numbers need to be kept to a manageable level for the harsh Czech winter. Leonard, Milan and Service UK's own Beardsmore invite friends and associates to enjoy driven hunting in these woods at the beginning of each winter. Milan has a very good idea of what numbers of each species of animal there are in these woods and those that are becoming overpopulated become fair game. Those with dwindling numbers aren't. All in all, the experience is a fantastic mix of good hunting and good people. However, it's not Team Wild that we invited along this time. Instead, we're tagging along with the two rugby heroes to see how they fare in the cold Czech forest. Craig Newby is a former Leicester and Allbacks hero, born and raised with hunting in his blood. Tom Croft is a Leicester, England and British Lions legend. But can he, or his egg-chasing pal Craig, make the grade with a rifle? It's the evening in Prague and people are enjoying the brisk winter air in the city's famous squares. At base camp, the Botel Admiral, the hunters have gathered for the welcoming evening. Craig and Tom are primed and ready for the day ahead. You will have um, the forester telling you where to go, what direction, but most likely will not lead you to your seats because it will take too much time. So you'll get off the track as quick as possible. He'll point you the direction. There'll be arrows on the trees. So just follow the arrows and go to your seats. Um, you, might not want, you might not know what direction the beaters are coming from. So please be careful when you shoot. Uh, you'll hear them. You'll hear the dogs. So um, anyway, you're Everybody's responsible for their own shooting, and please only shoot, make safe shots. At the end of the drive, everybody will have a time. That's, there's no more shooting after that. So that, that is a deadline, shooting. You're only allowed to shoot at very sick animals yeah. that are half dispatched. Like, dispatched, 20 meters maximum, yeah. and please do not shoot at any other animals. Leonard enjoys a joke at the expense of Owen after his little mix-up last year. This is for Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Owen shot a rather large female. It's obviously a female, but he Barons couldn't tell. Very old. Um, so they've drawn a little picture. <laughs> this is a boar. This is a sow. Well, we think so. The pyramid. Yeah. Very it's, flat pyramid. So Owen's still slightly confused. He's going to keep pulling the trigger until somebody tells him. Twelve years of killing the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and this is what they look like. Tyler and Bacher. <laughs> Once the welcome speech and introductions are done, it's time to pick pegs. Then, it's early to bed. The next morning, and everyone gathers ready for the day ahead. Milan blows the traditional hunting horn, and the hunters, beaters, and their gracious hosts give respect to the game.
Craig Newby heads out into the forest on the tractor and he finds a seat. He gets locked and loaded, then he's ready to go. Uh, Craig Newby here, Kiwi, uh, living in Leicester now though, five years. Um, bit of my background is shooting deer and pigs and rabbits back in New Zealand. A little bit different to the stuff we're doing today. Uh, normally with a knife or close range shooting, this is a little bit more driven stuff. Uh, the first time I've done it, so um, excited, nervous, under pressure, all of those kind of things. Bit of a new experience for me, but really looking forward to it. As always, the day starts quietly, and it's a case of waiting patiently. You can hear a pin drop in the forest right now, and the action seems a long way off. However, out of nowhere, two red hinds come bounding over the horizon and pass Craig's seat. He fires through the trees, and the lead hind is clearly hit. However, Craig isn't confident in his shot. I think I had it done at some back legs. Well, yeah, back rump, I think. As shots ring out in the distance, there's game on the move. A wild boar emerges through the trees and looks right at Craig, but he's not hanging around. Craig fires once, but he misses. He fires again, and the boar is clearly hit. He fires once more, and stops a pig dead in its tracks. <laughs> Down, eh? Yes. As the beaters come walking past, they give Craig the thumbs up. They find his wild boar and pull him to the edge of the trap for collection. Yeah, I just thought I'd tell you a quick interesting story about how I learned to shoot, particularly with a rifle. Um, back on the farm, whenever a sheep was needed for the freezer, the old man would send me out with a, an old open sight, dusty old rifle, 243 I think it was, and um, he'd have already marked out what sheep he wants done in the, in the paddock and we used to try and sneak up on it and get as close as possible and neck shot, had to neck shot because I didn't want to waste any meat, um, which was quite good, quite hard because you know, a herd of sheep, or, um, or a flock of sheep, not a herd, Flock of sheep got plenty of eyes and they're pretty nervous, so I used to shoot them. You used to go kick up the bum if you shot it in the back or the back legs or something, but that's a good way to start, you know, yeah. Gun safety and wind and all that stuff, even in sheep. With the drive finished, Craig heads down the track to claim his wild boar. Right, this is me first Prague boar or pig. Don't know what it is. Uh, sour. So if we turn her over, I've I was sitting up in the tree, um, looking back at a, a deer. We seen a, a, a red or a, or a seeker hind broadside, about oh, we're quite a way away. Have a look at that. The old pig uh, just snuck up on us. Really, just walked up, nice and quiet by itself. Um, so I'm here to shoot pigs. So I thought I'll, I'll take the pig out. Um, if I was more experienced, I probably would have shot it quicker. It was, it was nice and still but wasn't sure on size and, and bits and pieces, so I took it, yeah, hesitated a bit. Um, had a quick shot, missed. It ran off up the, up the woods here and uh, had another shot, wounded it. Um, as it turns out, I have a look here and uh, that's the exit wound. I think I uh, must have shot it in, the, in, the, in here somewhere, come across. Uh, then it got quite a far away, it got some speed up. Um, took my final shot and as we turn out, uh, Aimed at its nose, exit wound just in there. Must have got in the back of the ear or something like that, but it's not a giant, but she's spot on for what we want to do. And Leonard, hopefully he's happy with uh, one less of these around. So pretty pumped up, pretty on to be honest. Craig is joined by his neighbor and the pair of them look for his red hind. Craig follows the blood trail, leaving markers on branches so that the beaters can follow the trail should he not find it himself. There's plenty of blood. Okay. But is it long before Craig finds his deer? Red. 
Rib diff? He tags it quickly and then examines his quarry. We've seen a couple of deer up on the top of the hill from the, um, from the seat. Uh, they went left and then all of a sudden there was a bit of shooting over the yonder and they uh, gassed it down the hill, coming in a few, fairly, fair few clicks. Um, had a shot at one just on the, on the ride there. They were going pretty quick, I, I didn't know if I'd hit it or not. Then when I had another shot, went to have another shot and I saw a bit of blood in and around the back legs sort of area and I thought, yeah, well I've hit that. We saw it standing here. We're only about, I don't know, 50 metres from the seat. We saw it standing broadside. I was about to take another shot and that's when the pig turned up. So um, I thought, well, we'll take the pig down instead. Um, and as it turns out, this is, uh, we've just tracked the blood trail and found this, this uh, old girl, so. Our very only in Harford then arrives on the scene to partake in the local tradition with Craig. Congratulations. Thanks, Ian. On your first hunt. Cheers, Cheers mate. Excellent shot. Um, huh. We're very grateful to have been part of the harvest here. This is a very important part of the management of the woodland and also harvesting nature's bounty, so. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Awesome. Pretty honoured to be honest, uh, being part of it is, is fun for me, recreation, but obviously we're doing a job here for the estate, but um, the heart's beating now, you know, like it was just an adrenaline rush, so awesome, awesome stuff, and I love the tradition, we talked about it before, you know, that's what hunting's about, and sort of traditions, and be, to be part of it now, it's cool. Then, Mr Harford takes Craig through the tradition again for his wild boar. And uh, there's another great shot. Uh, once again, this animal has lived a very healthy life. It's been a very important part of the eco structure here. Uh, put up a good fight towards the end, and congratulations for an outstanding shot to, Cheers, mate. to harvest. Awesome stuff. Everyone enjoys lunch. and the warmth around the fire as they prepare for the afternoon drive. With a good morning under his own belt, Tom Croft is out this afternoon and finds a seat in the forest. Hi, my name's Tom Croft, uh, rugby player for the Tigers in England, um, here in the Czech Republic, or just in the outskirts, for uh, my first uh, boar hunting trip. Um, got into it actually courtesy of Owen Beardsmore, who's part of Service UK, and he uh, invited me along today. and. Uh, yeah, pretty nervous. Uh, here with my friend uh, Craig Newby. His first time shooting pigs. He's obviously stuck, stuck pigs over in NZ, but first time shooting pigs as well. So both pretty nervous and uh, pretty cold. Tom waits patiently. And it isn't long before there's a group of wild boar heading his way. He takes a shot at one of the later boar in the group and it's hit. He turns and takes another shot at a running wild boar. And he gives it a second to make sure. And it goes down. The first boar is still moving as it comes to his seat, so Tom gives it another shot and it just drops over the horizon. And then once the, I think once the first one didn't go down, it went free for all. I think over the first one, because I was told never to shoot the first one, because that's usually a sow. I think one's gone for a swim in the pool over there. And there's another one, which I'm pretty sure I must have hit it, because he's gone off over there. With the drive finished, Tom heads out of his seat to find his boar. Keep the rifle just in case one pops up. His first boar isn't too far away. Oh, it's the right one, at least. Nice Uberlauf. He tags us here and then takes a look for the second. That one too hasn't gone far <laughs> and it's down. Bit of a low shot. Gut. But that is two pigs. He tags the second one and drags it out to the track. Two more problem pigs taken off the estate. Mate, how did you get on today? Any good? 
I went okay. I went better than Sherlock. Uh, the home's up the, <laughs> up the road from me. Um, I got a smallish Uber Lauba, Uber Laufer this morning. Uber? Uber. Uber Laufer. And then picked up two Uber Laufers uh, this afternoon, which was brilliant, you know, five ran through. Okay. Well, like yourself? Yeah, I'd lucky this got one this morning. I got two this afternoon. I thought I'd shot uh, something illegal, but as it turned out, it was all right. So Everyone got lucky. Um, one twisted his ankle when I shot it while he was limping. But so it was disabled. Yeah, but no, awesome day. Um, every, yeah, it was unbelievable, it was really, to be honest. As the beaters gather all the fallen game into the tableau, the sun begins to fade and the banter begins. These hunts are all about gathering with friends, both old and new, to celebrate the game, partake in shooting sports, and to enjoy the great outdoors. That's another management job completed in the beautiful Czech forest of debris. But the day isn't done for the boys. So Greg, and with this saying, I'm going to uh, just do it, mate. Uh, <laughs> baptize you. Thank you. To uh, a hind hunter, but also to a wild boar hunter, because I don't think we have that much time to do four times. <laughs> but because we got 60 people, we're gonna hit your bottom now. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> so the first strike is for uh, Diana. The second strike is for Hubertus, who's a holy um, hunter. And the third strike is that you honor the game, the forests, and uh, the hunters. And then it's Tom's turn. Once again, the Czech Republic provides an experience of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. 